Hey, I'm Yuri Zuban, conversational backend developer at Master of Code Global and Glia. And this video will, will be about question answering with semantic search and language generation. We will be using OpenAI embeddings in point for vectors generation, a managed vector database pinecone for semantic search, and OpenAI completion endpoint for question answering. This combination is often called OpenAI Pinecone Stack or OP Stack. But we will go a little bit further <clears throat> and we will use the OP Stack for automatic creation of a Dialogflow chatbot using Dialogflow API. Uh, that is, each user's input will be passed to the Dialogflow chatbot, and if no relevant intent is triggered, then the OP stack will be used to get the relevant answer and to add a new intent to the chatbot. Such approach could allow building rule-based chatbots automatically. And all that is needed uh, is to generate vectors for the source information and to set up the OP stack and the integration with Dialogflow API. But let's start from the quick intro to the semantic search and OpenAI Pinecone stack as one of its possible implementations. If we ask the OpenAI text generation model, such as DaVinci 003, about some specific topic, quite possible that the answer will not be totally relevant, because the model may not have such specific or recent information. For example, if we ask how to start a specific model of a gas generator, the, we will get some generic answer. For example, here we see that uh, I see that point 6 and 8 are not exactly correct for this model. But we can add some context to the question and ask the model to answer it based on this context. For example, if we take the manual to our generator and copy the relevant part and compose the prompt, which includes the context and the question, chances are good that we will get the correct and relevant answer. Semantic search helps to find the proper context. To implement semantic search, we will need a so-called embeddings model, which is generating vectors, a list of fluid endpoint numbers, which indicates where in the multi-dimensional space of the model a given text or string is located. Strings with similar meaning will be located closer, even if they are written in different words. Thanks to this, if we generate vectors for some documents, and then we get a query, we will be able to find relevant documents by generating a vector for the query, and looking for the closest vectors and corresponding texts. There are multiple tools for storing vectors and doing sim similarity search, such as Elasticsearch, Redis, Postgres, both open source and free and fully managed and paid services. In this project, I used Pinecone. As an example, we will be building a chatbot which should help with operating a specific model of a gas generator, Shchipach 2500i. And as the first step, we will need to parse the source information, our manual, generate vectors for these pieces of text, and store the vectors together with the original text in the vector database. As it is what noted, for generating vectors in this project, we will be using OpenAI embeddings endpoint. I took the English manual and split it into chunks smaller than 1000 tokens. The manual is not big and I did it manually, cutting text by sections, but for sure this can be automated. For generating vectors and saving them to Pinecone, a small Python script can be used, which is located in the directory embeddings of this repo. To use this script, we will create a new Python virtual environment and activate it. We will install the dependencies. We need to save the needed secrets. 
and now we will run the script what it does is it imports the needed packages uh, so we will be using this text embedding ADA002 model with this number of factors we will initialize pinecone connection list our indexes so I do not have any indexes at the moment we also will check if uh, we can access uh, OpenAI then we will create our index with this given number of dimensions and we will connect to this index and then we will list documents and for each document we will read it context calculate how, what its size generate embeddings and then prepare metadata for upsetting and absurd the index to the pinecone database so let's run it so it is connecting OpenAI engines, Pinecone indexes now, OpenAI engines, and now it's connecting to Pinecone. So when I create the index, it initializes uh, some cloud instances and may take some time. Ready. So, and we see that our documents are being pro processed. Our documents are quite small. Index. There are 28 vectors. Let's fetch some example. And we see these values and metadata contains the information. Now let's proceed to the dialog flow part. We will go to the root directory of our repo and install the needed JavaScript dependencies. Let's see what this app does. So we have one road which serves as a webhook for the dialog flow bot, and here all incoming requests are handled by one. Uh, fallback handler. If any other intent besides the default fallback is triggered, we will return the response saved on dialog flow. Otherwise, we will extract the query. We will generate the intent name. We will retrieve our context. We will generate the answer for our intent based on the context. We will also generate alternative utterances and finally we will save the intent. Our first request to the completion endpoint will be to generate the intent name using this prompt. As you see, we will use a few short prompt uh, given an, an example of an intent name.
Next we will retrieve our context from Pinecone. So the official Pinecone package is for TypeScript and didn't work in my application, so I am sending the request directly using access package. Ensure that this part of the URL corresponds to the index URL in Pinecone. And now the main magic goes. This function retrieval with augmentation generates the answer to the given question based on the context found. And also the third request to the completions endpoint will be used to generate alternative training phrases or utterances to be saved in the dialog flow intent. And then we call the corresponding method uh, uh, to create a new intent uh, on dialog flow. So let's see it in action. We will run the application using npm start command. Our app started on the port 3001. In order to connect our dialog flow bot to a locally run backend app, we need to expose it somehow. I used a local tunnel for that. In a different console I will run this command, which will generate a random publicly available URL and we'll save it on dialog flow. We are started from an empty bot, which has only one default fallback intent, with a given response saying that a new intent was created, and our webhook is enabled. We will interact with our dialog flow bot using this testing UI. And let's write something like how much oil is needed. We see that backend is running, writing some logs. Here we got that response from the dialog flow so far. And logs say that we got a new intent. Let's check that. And really, we have a new intent with the given name and uh, several utterances, most of which were generated automatically. And we have this answer, 350 milliliters, which is correct as I remember. Let's add some more intents, send some more questions. How to start the generator? So we see that backend is working. and intent was added, and for example, how to replace the spark plug. Let's check what we've got on dialog flow. So in the intent list, we see three intents now. Replace spark plug with some response generated based on the manual. And start generator. Let's look at our logs in more detail. So we see that the default fallback intent was triggered with this re re query, how to replace the spark plug. This was the last one. Then we use the query to generate the intent name, and we've got this replace spark plug, and then we added a timestamp. Then we search for context. We generated the embedding for the query. And here is 
the document or documents retrieved from the pine cone and here is the main query which uh, generated the response for us the some formatting goes there and finally we will generate alternative utterances or training phrases for the intent we parse them as well and finally we add a new intent using Dialogflow API. So let's check how our, how our newly generated Dialogflow board works. Let's disconnect from our backend and also retrain the Dialogflow model for the changes to be applied and accessible through the bot. We will also stop the backend at all and let's see how our bot responds. What is the amount of oil needed? The utterance is a bit different from the original one. How to start generator? And uh, we are getting this response from the dialog flow bot now. And finally how to replace the spark plug and the corresponding response. So, to sum up, the current large language model's revolution will change the way bots are built, for sure. But still, the older type rule-based chatbots still may be used in some cases. Their advantages are lower price and also the control over bots' responses, and the approach shown above may be used to generate a staging chatbot, which then can be moderated and fine-tuned by bot trainers. Hope this, that this video was useful for you. Please see the link to the repository in the video description.